Okay, so what I've done here is I have cut out paper stencils for my design. So I've planned out my design already, and now I've just cut out the shape. So I'm going to be doing an owl. So I have the shape of the owl, the wing. I only need one eye. I could just reuse it. And I have the beak. And if you wanted to do feet or anything else, or whatever it is you're deciding to do, you would make that out of paper first. So that way we know what to cut on the fabric. So I'm going to start with my big shape. And I'm flipping the fabric over and I'm going to lay my stencil down onto the fabric. And then I'm going to take some pins and I'm going to go down and back up and be careful not to get your fingers. Just like that. And I'm going to pin it in a few places just so it stays in the right spot. Great, and once you have it pinned, then you want to cut it out. And if you have enough fabric to put another sheet underneath it, then you can cut two at one time. So when you cut fabric, you just want to have a lot of control over your work. Go slow. cut out my first piece of fabric so I'm going to take the pins out and put them into my pin cushions so I don't lose them. And if you need to do a second one, you can do a second one. If you're just doing one, then you are good after this step. So I've cut all of my stencils out. I have not sewn them on yet. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just get my little pieces ready to go. So for example, my eyes, I have to sew this little circle onto the bigger circle. And I'm just going to do a crisscross stitch here. So I've knotted my thread. I'm going to come up through the back and I'm going to kind of like sew it on like I would maybe sew a button. So I'm just going to come up through, back down. And then I'm going to come up on the side and I'm going to kind of crisscross them. So I'm going to make a letter X. And it's kind of hard to see because I'm doing it with the same color thread that's in the fabric. So it matches, but just made a letter X and then I can just tie it off on the back using a knot. And all of that is on my snap guide tutorial if you need to look at that a little closer. Okay, so now I have my eyes ready and I can pin these. I would pin them first just to get them in place and then pick your stitch that you want to use to sew around to get them onto your fabric. So now I have two pieces of fabric. I don't really need this one right now because I'm just worrying about getting all my features sewed on. This one will just be the plain back. So this one I can actually set to the side and just work here. All right, so your first step is to determine what color thread you are going to want to use. So you might want to think about colors that are happening in your fabric that will match well. So I think I might go with like a red or an orange maybe. And for this one, to sew on the eyes, I think I'm just going to do a simple running stitch. So I'm threading my needle, now I'm tying the knot. I'm just going to go up underneath, pull it through, and begin the stitching process going all the way around.
stitched on this eye so I'm gonna flip it over I'm gonna loop it through one of the previous stitches and make my knot and if you have leftover thread <clears throat> then you should use it for your other eye or use it somewhere in your piece Okay, so I have my eyes glued on and now I'm, or sewed on, and now I'm moving on to the wings. So here's where I have to kind of think ahead a little bit. So I know I'm going to attach this piece of fabric to another one. That means I'm going to be stitching around the edges. So for the wings, I'm actually not going to stitch here because I'm going to be doing that later. So all I need to do is stitch on the inside. So you want to determine your stitch, <clears throat> back stitch, running stitch, and attach and you might not have something like this in your design this is just my design so I'm showing you what I would do here if you run into this kind of issue okay so I will just work on this okay so I have added onto my wings but I did not stitch around the edges and then I added on a nose and I just wanted to show you with the nose I only stitched at the top so I can actually flap that up um, that doesn't bother me I kinda like that option if you want to do that if you don't like that then you can just put a little bit of glue on a tiny shape so in your piece whatever you are designing if you have a little shape like this sometimes it's hard to just stitch all around and make it look clean so that's why I just put three stitches here at the top and that's about it because that's going to be able to be enough to hold that little piece down and I'm fine with it. You know, if it flops up a little bit then it gives it a little three-dimensional quality to it and I think that's kind of neat. Okay, so now I've placed everything onto my sculpture. So the next step is to get my back fabric. So this is the front, this is the back and you want to make sure you have the pretty side down and you're going to pin these together to prepare to stitch all around so you want to line them up as best that you can if you have to do a little trimming and editing here now's the time to do it otherwise begin pinning Alright, and now you want to determine what color thread you want to use for your outside. It should tie in, again, with the colors in your design. You always want to be thinking about how to make it cohesive. And repeating colors that are seen in here is a good way to do that. So I have a ton of colors in mind, so I'm really good with almost any color I pick. Thread the needle. And you want to determine your stitch. What stitch are you going to use for the outside? You want to do a... Um, more of a running stitch. You could do a running stitch the whole time. Do you want to do a back stitch? Or do you want to go for the blanket stitch? So a blanket stitch is probably the trickiest one, but really once you get a hang of the blanket stitch, it's not so bad. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm planning this in advance, so I'm going to actually start stitching probably up near the top, and then at the bottom, um, actually I'll start down here, and then I'll stop when, I'll go all the way around and I'll stop when I get to about here. That way I can stuff the owl with stuffing and then stitch up the bottom. Okay, so you got to plan that part out too, where you're going to start. Okay, so the thing about starting here is you just want to make sure you lift up the one panel first. And you go in just through the top layer. So that way we don't see the knot on the back of our sculpture. The knot will be on the inside so nobody will be able to see it. Okay. Alright, so I have sewn all around and I've stopped right here. So I'm going to take out my pin. And here I have an opening at the bottom so I am going to use stuffing and if you just use stuffing it's going to end up more kind of like a pillow if you want to add a little weight to it um, we do have beans so you can stuff with beans and you can make a combination of stuffing so it depends on how you want yours if you just want it like a pillow just use the stuffing and you want to kind of 
especially if you have like little spots like I do like up here in the ear I just need a little bit to push up there and you don't want to overstuff it so get your little spots first and then move around Okay, so after you stuff it, you are probably going to want to again pin the bottom shut to help you with that final stitch. So line up your edges and stick a pin in there. You might even need two depending on the size of your piece. And then that way it will hold it together for you so you don't have to constantly be working to hold it together as you finish up the bottom of your piece. Right when you get to that last stitch, you got to know how to finish it off. Make sure everything is secure. And that how to hide your stitch so we don't see it. So I'm going in between the two fabrics I can see here. Pushing it out towards the back, pulling it tight, and giving it a cut. Alright, so here is my soft sculpture that I made an owl. You guys will have your choice on what you want to make. And let's see, it can stand. Yay, because that's uh, the beans are doing that. They're giving it weight so it can stand up. Alright, this is our fiber sculpture.